hey guys welcome to my channel welcome to talk concern it's a gaichi here welcome so for this video we'll be talking about the slogan what god cannot do does not exist by pastor jerry eze and the reason for speaking about this is not anything more than it has been third in my heart for quite some time to speak about it i think if not going up to a month to speak about this but i keep putting it off saying it's none of my business and i don't want to speak about it and today as i was just finishing up my bible reading let's say the last sentence it was drawn to my heart again to speak and just share my thoughts on this thing and the reason why i want to share it is just to perhaps give clarity for those who may still have questions about that slogan whether is or is not can or cannot do so it's a case of argument for many people but i just wanted to be clarity i'm not here to defend or actually dismiss people's opinions to be honest but perhaps to bring clarity because i myself had the same issue uh, when i first had that i was taken a, a bit back with it i'm like what what does that even mean and yeah it, it just i guess confused my mind and equally intrigued me to try and find out more where that came from because i personally did not know where it came from until later on because i saw it first somewhere on someone's post and it was just what god, indeed what god cannot do does not exist i'm like what does that mean what does this person mean i didn't realize where that came from so it was later on that i found out where it came from and the ministry of pastor jerry is something that my family members are quite into and they often send me the links for me i'm not necessarily into that type of praying in a way because the first time i listened to it honestly clicked out because the shouting was too much for me and yeah it wasn't my way of praying to say but i've managed to listen to one whole session on a, re uh, a record like pre-recorded was on youtube one of the live sessions for a whole time i think it was just for me to just kind of see where they are coming from so it was a case of just opening up the mind to listen to what they are saying um so for me before i begin i'm just going to say be open-minded to listen to what i have to say if you like what i'm saying please don't forget to like and share uh so that it could make people understand more i'm not going to try and speak too much neither am i going to try and um quote bibles a lot i'm just going to quote the message i read that finally drew me to speak out because everything just made sense it's not that it wasn't making sense since i discovered this man and the person that made the slogan and the reason why it's just it just puts it together i'm just saying this one is the one that really pushed me to just make this video or make this recording honestly as this is impromptu to do and just do it anyways let's go in <laughs> so um the slogan came from someone called pastor jerry Eze, and he is a nigerian pastor and he is a pastor for a church called nsp dd i'll put it <laughs> i'll put the name of the church <laughs> okay for you to see um and they have live sessions on youtube that you can watch every day prayer sessions that they, you can watch uh, or listen to every every day and testimonies that people try to bring out on how the ministry is impacting their own lives so why am i even speaking as i mentioned when i first had that slogan i was like what god cannot do does not exist does that even make sense <laughs> um i i honestly try to um break it down to try and see where this person is coming from i couldn't but where it came to me was like when i listened to an interview by pastor and his wife and they were being interviewed about their own life and the slogan i think the funny thing that he said there is like if you don't like the slogan go and make up your own see if you will trend <laughs> because this itself is a trending slogan and for some people it's become a movement for the people that are into it okay and i'm like okay <laughs> i thought that was funny and i like the way he answered he's like listen I, I bet he's tired of trying to explain 
what he means i was like if you don't like it make up your own and just like <laughs> let it let it go like it's not that serious it's not something to argue about it is his conviction and this is where i'm coming from so when i looked at that and just thought about it and listened to the interview and listened to his a bit of his life story and also how he's seen the ministry or his own uh, mission being fulfilled in his church and in the lives of others and one of the things i discovered is that most of the time we do not know where people are coming from he's been pastoring for quite some years i didn't even know <laughs> i even saw um travis green was actually at his church like three years ago and i'm like wow i didn't know this man has been pastoring for years but it's only now especially during 2020 that the slogan blew up and everyone was saying it and people tuned into his ministry and what he really kind of dug to me is that people do not know how much work you have put in into your ministry people only see the highlights of it the success and i was asking myself what made this guy have this slogan and then listening to his interview as i listened i felt that holy spirit helped me understand that he was through the things that the man has gone through and then looking at where he has come and he told you he was raised by a single mother he was very poor someone else paid for his school fees to go to school other people trained him to go to school and look at where he has come to he's even told you his work history and where he has worked and what he has done and one of the things that he mentioned in his uh, work history that he worked for the correct me if i'm wrong is it unicef or un something for communication something communication director i can't remember and it hit me i'm like you see when you are working in communications you must be able to know how to use words that reaches to the audience that you're trying to target and i thought that's actually what he did he used the skills the knowledge that he had from his work life and applied that into his ministry he was able to develop a, a word or a slogan or a sentence that hates people that delivers his message straight to the point the way he wants it to, de to be delivered the way he is convicted to deliver it and so if we notice then that was his conviction from what he has gone through from the things that he has been through what he has seen god bring him from and to where he is and the impact that he's seen his ministry is making i said like sometimes when i look at myself and look at the things that are happening the impact people converting people changing people dropping that by dropping out of their simple ways prostitutes convert converting he's like wow there is nothing god cannot do i even gave the story of his wife and his anger and her anger issue and how that uh, almost ruined their marriage i i bet he's thinking like if god can convert my wife <laughs> from being so angry to where where she is now there must be nothing god cannot do so maybe it's the sentencing for people that they have issue with but i think what we are looking at let's look at the words just look at the context and the message behind the uh, words and equally at the person that is making that sentence what has the person gone through for this person to say wow what god cannot do does not exist you know there are some things that we have seen in this life and sometimes we don't even know what else to say the only thing we can say is like like some people will say you are the impossible was it god god of the impossible see these are convictions people have in their mind you know the song that says it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul if you know the history of that song that is from a man who lost three of all his family if not is it three of his children or all his family members in the boat he had nothing to say he had nothing to do when he went to the scene where this happened the only thing that he was able to do is just to comfort his mind and say it is well it is well so i think when explaining this all i'm saying is look at the person that is making the sentence look at the person that is make um saying the words what is the thing that brought him to this conviction that say there is nothing god cannot do or the other way what god, god cannot do does not exist and then if you look at that word if you break it down into its uh different forms okay what does that mean what god cannot do does not exist the way i saw it is like 
whatever that is already exists is already existing so some people were saying that god cannot lie but lies exist but that's the whole point lies exist therefore god can work on liars there are other things that god say god uh, he cannot do but that doesn't mean that that is god himself he's saying these things exist that means he can change it so that means what god i might un understand what god cannot change is not already in existence he says whatever there has been has already been isn't that in the book of john okay whatever is created is already created no matter what we as humans do is already done what if you notice most of the things that are happening now happened back in the days if you go back to your old testaments all those things has happened all those things has happened and still continue happening so whatever is there's nothing new under the sun so whatever god cannot do does not exist in that whatever that is already exists god can undo god can redo god is so everything that is existing is already there so therefore it doesn't there's nothing else that is, ex is going to exist that is not already existing so whatever god cannot do does not exist if god cannot change a heart of a prostitute that means prostitution doesn't exist if god cannot change the heart of an angry person that means the anger does not exist if the god cannot change the heart of someone that is um persistent in their wrongful way or a drunkard or something like that that means drunkness does not exist that's the other way i came to see it i'm like maybe that's where he's coming from i'm not pastor jerry please i'm only just saying from my own perspective um and just shedding another light to say maybe this is where he is coming from because if poverty the way he is describing his poverty was like there is poverty and there is poor okay his own was like almost abject poverty that he's coming from and he saw where he his he came from and this is where he's going and where he is from now so um therefore <laughs> if poverty does not exist then god cannot do anything about it. it's already existing so i think that's where he's coming from and he even said it if you notice their anthem of the nsp the nsp sometimes i call them nspcc but nsp nsp DJ. listen i'll find out the church properly <laughs> i'm so sorry for those who are worshippers of that church um so if you look at the anthem it says this we know you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek your face all power is in your hands with you nothing is impossible we know you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek your face all power is in your hands with you nothing is impossible to do we know the reward there's like almost like a conviction do you know like it is a conviction that they're telling this is my conviction that you are a reward that there is nothing you cannot do for those who diligently seek your face and why all power is in your hands and there is nothing impossible you cannot do okay and then it says this is my confidence and that is when we come to you so this is the confidence that he had this is the confidence that when we come to you what you cannot do what you cannot fix what you cannot solve does not exist if we really break down into their own and uh, national anthem in terms of their song you will understand where that whole phrase comes from okay the phrase is where they come from it says this is the confidence that when we come to you what you cannot fix what you cannot do what you cannot solve does not exist and actually this then goes back to the things i was trying to say is that means that whatever god has whatever god can do already exists whatever he cannot do does not exist so <laughs> what you cannot fix if god can cure a leprosy someone with a, le a leper that means leprosy already exists if god can cure a blind mind that means blindness already exists so this is where they are coming from in my own opinion no this is my own humble opinion and they continue with their song okay what you cannot solve does not exist and what you cannot fix does not exist and then just to conclude i just say to me like this is the bible passage i think it would be good to read to even see where i'm talking about someone's conviction someone's experience draws them to say things that reflects what they have experienced what their conviction is and this is coming from the book of genesis now if you don't know the story of sarah abraham and hagar please read them i'm not going to read all of that story that's 
the story that you can find in Genesis chapter 16 and it starts from uh, verse 1 all the way to uh, verse 15 and that's what I want to focus that doesn't mean that that story ends there but let's talk about this is after Hagar has run away from Sarah after um, the issues that they had in the home so she ran away because she felt she was mean um she was being mistreated or she was actually being mistreated as the bible put it um but she was not innocent in it in herself as well but she ran away from the hostility but this is what um she experienced from verse 11 the angel of the lord appeared to her okay and said to her sorry actually let's start from verse 9 the angel of the lord appeared to her and said to her go back to your mistress and submit to her the lord i said again i will increase your descendants so much that they will be numerous to count and then if we go on it goes about to telling her um what the son will be and how god will protect her but then if we focus on verse 13 it says here this is one thing i like about this place this is Hagar speaking she said said she gave this name to the lord who spoke to her you are the god who sees for she said i have now seen the one who sees me that is why the well was called bear lahe rahu rahu i think that's how it's pronounced bear lahe rahu it is still there between kadesh and bered now what are we talking about is after everything after she got pregnant gave birth to ishmael and sarah became jealous and um threw her away and sat mistreating her she ran away actually sarah did not kick her away but she ran away um because she couldn't face it anymore and then the angel of the lord visited her and what she said that's what she said so now she said she gave the name of the lord that spoke to her you are the lord that sees and this is the same thing i saw this is what actually drew me to now speak because and then it just clicked it again clicked it to me it's not that he hasn't clicked before but that maybe that's what this pastor jerry's his own conviction came to so it's like whatever he has seen in his life he says do you know what god god cannot do does not exist like Hagar says you are the lord who sees because why I have seen the one who sees me. He, she has seen the one who sees her tears, who acknowledges her, who supports her, who tells her things will be well, who said he will look after her child. Okay? And that is why the well is called the name I just mentioned. I'll write out the name. So, in conclusion, all I'm saying is maybe next time, if you hear that phrase, just be open minded and just ask the person, like, see where that pastor is coming from and yeah on that note don't forget to like share and subscribe if you like this video okay signing off talk on soon